Scientists of Reddit. What are some scary scientific discoveries that most of the public is unaware of? Super gonorrhea is resistant to the vast majority of strong antibiotics, including fluoroquinolones and macrolides. N. Gonorrhea is mutating all the time to resist antibiotic effects. There have been multiple reports of super gonorrhea in Australia, England, etc. You probably have to have sex to get it. So most of us are safe. Many people may be silent carriers for mad cow disease and won't know for another decade or so. Mad cow disease from the 1980s 1990s was due to cows being fed the remains of other animals. People then ate their beef and consumed prions. A protein that can destroy the human brain. It's thought that many people still might carry prions but won't know until they start experiencing the symptoms of Creutzfeldt Jacob disease or bovine spongiform encephalopathy. Which might be 10-50 years after consuming the contaminated meat. It has a long incubation period. You can also contract the prions from blood transfusions. Which is why so many UK citizens from that time period still aren't allowed to donate blood. Once the symptoms begin, cognitive impairment, memory loss, hallucinations, etc, you usually die within months. There is no cure or treatment. My spouse knew a guy who died of Creutzfeldt Jacob disease last year. He was in his early 60s and had just retired. One day. His eye began twitching. Not the eyelid. The eye itself. Making it difficult for him to see well. Within three weeks. He was in a vegetative state. He died a short time later. Major solar coronal mass ejection apocalypse. The thinking goes up the big one. When it hits, about once every 500 years. If not sooner, would be powerful enough to knock out electrical and communication systems across earth for days. Months. Or even years. Nixing power grids. Satellites. GPS. The internet. Telephones. Transportation systems. Banking. You name it. Edit. Thanks for all the comments. I think the biggest factor here would be the fact that nobody would know what happened. In a fear-fed world this would lead to rumors and civil unrest very quickly. People running to get guns. Food. Taking advantage of the chaos to commit crimes etc. It would be a nasty scenario. Oh yes. The most relevant recent incident was the Carrington event of 1859. The analog world of the time remarked that some telegraph operators were continuing to send and receive messages after disconnecting the device's power supplies. Today. The disruption would be catastrophic in highly unpredictable ways. Like for example. What would the result of a toxin pulse into the world environment be like after a billion small electrical fires ignite tons of plastic and solder? The total breakdown of the delivery network would instantly start the 6 weeks to starvation countdown. And then there's the unfortunate fact that the vast majority of people in my country, at least, have no survival skills whatsoever. And the first thing they'll do for answers is reach for their non-functional phones. Methodic in while Martians will be barbecuing their neighbors within the week. You watch. The replication crisis in psychology, though the problem occurs in many other fields. 2. Many studies aren't publishing sufficient information by which to conduct a replication study. Many studies play fast and loose with statistical analysis. Many times you're getting obvious cases of p-hacking or harking, hypothesis after results known, which are both big ducking no-nos for reputable science. And then all the research that gets repeated only to find null results over and over again. And none of it gets published because of the null results. Research is incredibly inefficient. The emphasis placed on publishing, at least within the academy, can incentivize quantity over quality. Not much more immediately horrifying than antibiotic resistant bacteria. And the mad cow disease one. The world has 70% less insects on average than it did 40 years ago. We really are coming up on our silent spring. For the people saying there are less pests. Those aren't the ones we're worried about. Insect pollinators are vital to so many crops. We could be facing serious problems with certain food supplies soon. In recent years China has had issues with apple and pear crops to the point where some regions have had to pollinate crops by hand. Also. Insects form lower blocks of many food webs. 
and their disappearance will spell trial for higher traffic levels. Seen to fuckamerican.com link. I was just discussing this with my best friend. Why aren't people freaking out over insectogen? This is about as bad a sign of planetary health as I can imagine. Prions are so crazy. It's just a malformed protein. Yet. Somehow it teaches other protein to fold themselves improperly. The human body has no defense against it. Truly terrifying. And they're generally only detectable through an autopsy of the brain which means you gotta be dead first. Abdominal aortic aneurysm. It's basically an aneurysm that happens in the big artery in the middle of the abdomen. It's fine and is usually asymptomatic but when it ruptures. A patient loses all their blood within a short period of time. The scary part is that it usually is diagnosed by accident due to annual checkups for something else. Anyone can have the disease. But especially people with Marfan syndrome. Smoking. Hypertensive. And hyperlipidemic. I actually know two people personally who have died from that within the last 10 years. First one. The vast overuse of antibiotics has lead to superbugs that are antibiotic resistant. At the same time. The diversity of microbes within the human has drastically decreased in first world countries. This leads to a correlated rise in allergies and gastrointestinal diseases. As we use more antibiotics and antibacterial viral products. Then biodiversity of microbes decrease. And superbugs have a much easier pathway of invading the body. With a very biodiverse microbiome. Your resident microbes will try to fight off these infections much easier. We need to focus on helping bacteria. Not killing all of it. Edit. Hi. I am a biology undergraduate BTW. But I do work in a microbiology lab where I do genetic sequencing and study antibiotic production. I am no expert. But I am in love with microbiom research. For anyone else curious about the subject. I recommend I contain multitudes by Ed Yong. It covers the subject and across the animal kingdom and it's actually really fun to read. Known link between untreated hearing loss and cognitive decline that is. Dementia. Eater. Keyword is untreated. If you previously had normal hearing and it started slipping. Please see an ent and audiologist. Hearing aids have come down in cost and improved in function aesthetics even in the last 10 years. If you are a veteran in the US. The VA will normally cover your hearing aids. If you have had hearing loss since childhood, you're not one of the ones I'm worried about. You have either learned sign language to keep you from being isolated due to your hearing loss and or you have learned how to use hearing aids cochlear implants to keep you from being isolated due to your hearing loss. The link is really between communication and cognition. Not the physical ability to hear. It's just that in people who previously had normal hearing, if they don't do anything it will impair their communication and in turn affect their cognition. Not a scientist but recently discovered that the rate of which people in my country will get cancer has reached 1 out of 2 people. Or basically half the population will be diagnosed with some form of cancer in their lifetime. No one believes me that it's that high when I tell them that. Even if I show the actual reports I got this information from. Edit. Many people have asked where I am and how I found this information out so I will share the link here so new people see it. Canada car link slash Canadian cancer statistics HTML. Live long enough and you're pretty much guaranteed to get cancer. About 8 years ago. A friend of mine was working on the technology to allow you to feel things through your smartphone. Not just the emotion of anger that you feel every day through Twitter. But the textures of fabrics of clothing you are thinking about buying. He moved to Boston and we lost touch but I think about his job every single week. Lost touch with him ants are attracted to come in when you nut on the kitchen floor the ants will prefer the nut over the other stuff making it perfect for keeping ants away from your food you know i'm somewhat of a scientist myself i like that you said when as if it were already predetermined that at some point in my life i will nut on the kitchen floor not a scientist but i will still take the time to mention something that scares the shit out of me i only found about a month ago and I don't think a lot of people are aware of but probably should be. Back in 1946-58, the US tested 60 nuclear weapons on the Marshall Islands and buried the nuclear leftover waste and soil in a 30-foot deep cavern sealing it with a concrete dome. 
The dome is cracking and now it's leaking into the ocean and surprise surprise it's not fixing itself. And the people responsible are essentially ignoring it or saying it is not their problem. Imagine Chernobyl but bigger and in the ocean. For your information the dome is only a portion of the radiation. Truth is. That whole island chain is badly contaminated on a scale that we can't fix. Man. Humans are some dumb mother duckers. We are doomed by our combination of naivete and bravado. Plants can scream. Link. Edit. Second link since some are having issues with the first one. Also. Since this is blowing up a bit. It's worth mentioning that the study that found this has yet to fully go through the peer review process. Definitely keeping an eye on it. Though. That is. Surprisingly frightening. Pineapples have an enzyme that digests protein. So whenever you eat a pineapple. It is eating you back. It's the reason why you have to boil pineapple before embedding it in jello. The bromelain in the pineapple keeps the gelatin from setting. Ugh this is sadly turning into non-scientific till fun facts from people who didn't fully read the title. Noticed OP didn't flag a serious either. So 55% of these facts are probably made up. The fact that you can edit genes from the comfort of your home. The protocols are out there. The literature is too. The materials are easy to obtain. Asia has a lot of unregulated production of anything biochemistry related. It's where I get my phytohormones. This means that a kid with some free time. Roughly 5000, dollars and a heap of motivation could potentially create something world threatening. It might not work on the first hundred tries, and you can try a hundred times within a week. But once it does. There's no stopping it I know for a fact that not a single country in the world has developed a working protocol for a shutdown or containment. Roughly a year ago I informed someone working in the anti-terror division about this. I told that I modified brewer's yeast by cold shocking it in a suspension with wild type yeast DNA to make some new craft beers. And that anyone could do that. Not just to yeast. But to a whole lot of microorganisms. I was asked to come and give a lecture about this. So that the air team would have a clue about how biochemical warfare could potentially be prevented contained. But I never heard from them again. What's scary is that this is not a discovery. This is out there. This is happening on a large scale to do good. And people justify it because of that. It's being used to clean up oil spills. To produce medicines like insulin. Even to capture CO2 from the air and convert it to bioavailable molecules. Putting vitamin A in rice. But it takes just one rotten apple to spoil the world. Bill Gates has spoken out about this. And I think more people in the world should. We can't stop this from happening. But we can have the right protocols in place to contain it. As soon as I think about what's needed to contain something like that. And to stop people from fleeing contained sites. Well. You've seen the movies. It would have been very advantageous if the serious tag were included. OP. You forgot a. Serious. Tag. This thread is full of nonsense. There are ancient microbes lying dormant in glaciers. As climate change progresses and these glaciers melt. It is possible that we will be exposed to ancient diseases for which we will have no immunity. Source. It's more likely that they'll be too archaic to actually attack us. They evolved to infect single-celled organisms. The source even states this. It'd be like someone from 3000 years ago in a horse-drawn carriage trying to race a race car. It's possible for the former to win but it'd require some extraordinary circumstances. That being said. Climate change is scary but for other. More significant reasons in oh. The Higgs boson. Which was hypothesized decades ago was discovered via the Large Hadron Collider. Its real life discovery proved that it's what gives mass to everything. But there is a non-zero chance that a Higgs boson can drop to a lower energy state. And because of the law of entropy. It's a preferred state to decay to a lower energy state if possible. The influence of a low energy state boson would kick off a chain reaction causing other Higgs bosons to drop to a lower energy state. The problem with this is that if a Higgs boson drops to a lower energy state then it can't give mass to things anymore. Which is universal implications when mass doesn't have mass anymore. 
It's theorized that the infinitesimal small probability of this occurring could lead to a circumstance where the universe as we know it disappears. Essentially it would occur like an absolute void progressing through the universe, low energy state Higgs bosons infecting any other Higgs boson they come across. Maybe the closest thing to a Thanos snap. But it causes everything to disappear in the universe but only at the speed of light rather than instantaneously. Doesn't that mean it could have already happened somewhere? It's just too many light years away for us to even notice it? Make sure to like and subscribe so we can watch together.